Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mic Check Podcast. I am T Word, the People's Champ. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go ahead and support the channel. We're going to keep putting out great content as long as you guys are enjoying it. So, today I want to talk about um 154 pound boxer Jamel Charlo who is also the undisputed champion at the weight class um he's got a lot going on these days he was scheduled to fight in January on the 28th um against Tim Zhu son of legendary boxer Costa Zhu um unfortunately Charlo suffered a hand injury looks like he broke some bones in two places in his hand he's even going on to post medical reports uh confirming his injury and it's unfortunate um a lot of the little back and forth has been going on around it as well. As many of you may know, those who keep up with boxing, you'll know that last year or earlier this year, he was supposed to fight uh, Brian Castaño in around February. However, the fight had to be postponed because Castaño suffered a biceps and an arm injury and they had to push the fight back to May. Now, here's the thing about this particular injury. Um, Charlo questioned it. He thought maybe the boxer uh, Castaño was cycling off of some type of performance enhancing drugs, aka PEDs, and he kind of publicly questioned whether or not he actually had an injury. Um, he even pointed to some workout videos showing the way that Castaño was using his arm, and he was just like, hey, this doesn't look right. However, nothing came of it, and they eventually made it to the ring with um, Charlo knocking him out late in the fight, I believe the 10th round, to become the undisputed champion in their weight class. Now, fast forward to Charlo making the announcement that he'd broken his hand in training, and Castaño went ahead and he publicly accused um, Charlo of the same thing, basically saying, hey, imagine getting an injury in camp that's gonna push your fight back. Hmm, you know, kind of questioning like, it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun in so many words. And um, Charlo went ahead and posted his medical proof that he was actually injured, uh, no from the doctor, things like that. I haven't seen the x-ray that I can verify, but um, I have seen what looks like a verifiable medical letter, uh, stuff like that. Um, it just makes you wonder, is this going to become a thing with boxers to where they question each other's injury and try to point to some type of illicit play? You know, are you cycling off performance enhancing drugs? And as we talk about that, we have to think about uh, Javante Tank Davis is supposed to fight um, Ryan Garcia later on in January, excuse me, later on in 2023, uh, after he fights uh, Hector Luis Garcia in January 2023, which is just a little, a little over a week away from now. Um, Tank has been publicly accusing Ryan of using performance enhancing drugs. And it just, it makes you wonder two things. If, you, if you're in a lot of boxing circles, you watch a lot of boxing podcasts, or listen to a lot, a lot of boxing podcasts, you hear a lot of people accusing boxers, including Errol Spence, of juicing or, you know, on some to performance enhancing um, steroids, HGH. Uh, Connor Ben was recently popped for PED use. So when you start to just look at the bigger scope of boxing, these boxers are starting to come out and point at other people like they believe that something's going wrong, that they're cycling off some drugs or something like that. I'm not sure that these type of narratives move the sport forward because let's think about how popular baseball was. And when the steroid era hit and guys started snitching and telling on each other, baseball took a major hit. In my opinion, it's never recovered. It's not been the same. Um, the home run era where uh, Barry Bonds and, and Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa and these guys were just knocking the ball out of the park. Um, once people figured out that they were all on something or believed that they were on something, just looking at their body developments and stuff like that, people kind of stopped caring about baseball. And boxing already has a very niche following. So if you add in the concerns over um, prohibited drug use, it's going to make more people decide they really don't care about boxing and maybe even start to rally to get rid of the sport altogether. So I think that these things don't really push the sport forward. They actually can set it back. And the thing that pays these guys salaries suddenly can disappear. And you've been invested all this time in being a boxer since a teenager or even earlier. And what are you going to do? So I think that, you know, the guys need to be a little bit careful about who they're making accusations at. And as long as the sanctioning bodies enforce testing, um, everybody should get on the same page with Bader or USADA, whichever they choose, or some other agency that they create independently of the sanctioning bodies. Maybe that'll help clean up the sport without making it such a public display of um, question marks. 
Um, I think that that's what it's going to take. So I'm wondering what you guys think. Um, is the public questioning of these boxers really necessary? And is there something that can be done to help preserve the um, the cleanliness that we expect to see within boxing? Because let certain fans tell it, everybody's on the juice, and I just don't think that that's true. So I'd love to get your comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. This has been T-Word with the mic check. Until the next time, peace.